Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church on March 14th. It's our fourth Sunday of Lent. And it's good to uh, be here and see people back in the uh, pews again this morning. Uh, I've got a few announcements this morning. Uh, in your bulletins uh, are forms for the Easter lily donations if you'd like to buy an Easter lily for the morning Easter service in memory of someone or honor of someone. Those are in your bulletin. Please get those back um, a week from tomorrow. Get the hat, make sure those are back in the church office. So they're in your bulletins. There's a few. If you don't have one, there's a few forms over on the bell table. This afternoon, there's an admin council meeting. Um, at 5 o'clock, it'll be here in the sanctuary. Uh, we'll ask everybody attending to wear masks, and we'll follow the social distancing protocols. We continue with our Lenten Bible study, reading the book Words of Life by Adam, Adam Hamilton, and those are sessions uh, downstairs in the fellowship hall held on Thursdays at 10.30. And again, um, social distancing and mask protocols will be in place for that study. The book just completed its third session, and uh, it will wrap up on March 25th. For those interested in joining, it's not too late, but if you would, please let Taryn know in the church office, either by email or by calling the church office. Time again for our next walk in the woods. That will be March 20th at 10 a.m., and uh, that will start by meeting at the Speckle Fall Coffee Shop, and then uh, they'll drive over to the Uari Trail. There. Everybody's welcome to join that group. Methodist men will be meeting on March 21st, that's next Sunday, 7.30 a.m. downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, it's time now to start uh, discussions and planning for the spring barbecue, so please come to the Methodist men meeting next Sunday, 7.30. And next Saturday, no, two weeks, sorry, the food pantry, our church is responsible for the food pantry on Saturday, March 27th. So if you're willing or able to volunteer for that, please be there Saturday the 27th at the food pantry, 7.30 a.m. to uh, start set up. So now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the word. Amen.
please stand and join me in the call to worship. You'll read the dark prayer. Come from your exile to meet the God who sets us free. What does it mean to be free? <clears throat> How can we make the choices freedom offers? Come from, Come from the lives of unfaithfulness to encounter the God whose care for us is unceasing. What does faithfulness require of us? How can we, unworthy ones, accept God's care? Come from the shadows where you have hidden to rejoice in the God who brings light and hope. What will happen when our deeds are revealed? How will our lives be changed by God's truth? May we remain standing for our opening hymn, Love Divine, loves, All Loves Except. because God's image resides deep within each of you. So return God's blessing by the way you love others. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
unison our prayer for our illumination. Holy and gracious God, may your Holy Spirit give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know the hope to which Christ has called us, the riches of his glorious inheritance among us, and the greatness of his power for those who believe. Our scripture lesson today comes from John 3, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believed him are not condemned, but those who did not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. And Evans has our children. Pastor Tom has agreed to be my subject this morning. So we'll um, start the game with Pastor Tom. Pastor Tom, look, look, look. Do you see those kittens? They're right here. Oh, made you look. How many of you have ever played that game before? Or even worse, when somebody plays it on you and says, oh, made you look. They tricked you. They made you look. The goal of the game is that you don't fall for that trick, right? You don't look. Well, just so you know, Pastor Khan looked for the kittens. We all tend to look. And in our scripture today, that's what's happening. Jesus is saying to us, look, I want you to look. It's not a trick. I want you to look at how God has worked through me to show you the love of God. So just as it says there, again, you're not being tricked. You're being shown the actions and the words that God wants us to know. In other words, God so loved the world that he made us look through Jesus. We are also reminded in today's scripture that when we look to Jesus, and learn about God from Jesus, then we too will shine with God's love and light. And just like Jesus offered God's love, healing, and forgiveness, we too are offered God's love, healing, and forgiveness. In other words, those who do what is true come to the light. Then when we shine God's light and share God's love with others, we are helping them to better see God, just like Jesus helped us to better see God. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who helps us see you better. Help us to do the same for others. Thank you and amen. And one last thing before I leave. You know I love to bring something to show, and I'm not going to show you what's in here. You'll have to wait. But before Palm Sunday, the children in the church will get a little bag. And each day from Palm Sunday through Easter Sunday, you will have scripture to read and something to do to help prepare you and prepare your hearts for Easter Sunday. And this will be activities that you can do with your family each night. So look for that right before Palm Sunday.
And I'll let you know what goes around, what comes around. Thank you so much. That is very meaningful, Children's Church. I really appreciate it that you prepare something for children during the, you know, Palm Sunday. That's very good. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of our lifetime, protect us from the temptation of the world and the errors of the false self. Fill our hearts and bodies with the strength of the Holy Spirit and illumine our mind with the knowledge of the great mystery of Christ. In his name we pray, amen. The Israelites complained to Moses saying, in this wilderness, you, we have been eating this miserable food and we do not have water. They were grumbling about food and regretting their living Egypt. Did they cultivate the land to plant a seed, water the ground, and labor for the harvest? No. Did anyone die of the lack of water? No. God provided them with the manna from above and the quails and the water. And that their clothes and sandals were not ruined. Also, they did not synthesize their situations. They forget where they had been slaves in Egypt and where they are free from slavery. More importantly, they lost the sight of their goal, the promised land. Rather than thanking God for their provisions, the Israelites in the wilderness focus on pettiness. We understand it is not easy to consume same food every meal. Perhaps they were not used to eating manna and the quail, which were different from the food that they ate in Egypt. A countryman, if he has a choice, perhaps he pre prefers to have traditional country food rather than sushi or Chinese food or Mexican food. But if food is free and the option is starvation, why not take, take it and be thankful? Peter and I were observing others swimming. Peter said, that person needs to stretch his arms further out. And he pointed to another person. He needed to kick his feet under the water. He pointed to one after another. So I was uncomfortable. So I asked him, Peter, why do you point out others' mistakes in swimming? He replied, Kong, their mistakes are my teachers. As I point out how they can improve, I see I can improve. Like what Peter did, what lessons can we learn from the Israelites complaining? Mike Young Connell, a writer and a theologian, wrote an article called The Tyranny of Trivia, saying, quote, There is something wrong with the organized church. The problem with the church is not corruption. It is not institutionalism. The problem is a pettiness. One of the council members is angry because a meeting was held without his knowledge. 
A church member is angry because the color of the new carpet is not what he wanted. One of a woman's group is up arms because the youth took some sugar from the kitchen. In other words, churches are so preoccupied with the petty, they cannot spend the time required to do what does matter. So I would like to say what people in church leadership are apparently having a difficult time saying today. Pettiness has no place at all in any church for any reason. Petty people are ugly people. They are people who have lost their vision. They are people who have turned their eyes away from what matters and focused instead on what does not matter, unquote. He does not say little things are unimportant, but that we should focus on, impo- on the important things. The leaders of the church have turned their eyes away from that matters. The Israelites turned their eyes away from God and from the promised land because of food and water. They forgot the main thing was to keep the main thing, main thing. Which was getting through the wilderness and occupying the land God had promised to their ancestor Abraham. What is God's main thing? That is the main thing for us, the community of believers at First UMC in Mount Gilead. God's main thing is this. For God so loved the world. Please say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved the, loved the world. It does not say God loved a nation or love a denomination and love a certain race. As St. Augustine says, God loves each one of us as if there was only one of us to love. God loves Pastor Kong, even though he has Chinese eyes. God loves you, even though you cannot speak a Korean word. God loves you, loves you, even though you are feeling that you are unlovable and unlovely. God loves me, even though I cannot speak perfect English. Even though we feel that the world is abnormal now with COVID, messy, broken, and overwhelming, God loves this world. God loves everyone in the world. Instead of giving up on us, God chooses to be in solidarity with us through Jesus Christ. That is the main thing. All church activities that do not meet God's main thing are petty. We are to pull all our energy and efforts to God's main thing. Consequently, we must give up our pettiness. If we continue in our pettiness, we become like the complaining Israelites, losing our sight of the promised land and sinning against God. To Israelites, God sent venomous serpent. And 
We do not know how many serpents, but Bible says many people died because the serpent bit them and the people died. So Israelites requested that Moses intercede for them and Moses got very strange instructions about making a bronze serpent and hanging it on a pole. Then he was to inform the people that anyone who was bitten would survive if she or he would just look at the bronze snake. Strange. Why not just get rid of snakes? Was this God's way of saying that healing would not come until rec we recognize the disease and the problems? So the prescri prescriptions was given. Look to God and live. So they did. It was not the serpent that gave life, but their beliefs in God who had commanded Moses to act. And finally, the grumbling stopped. In the Gospel of John, Jesus recalls this story in the conversation with Nicodemus in Jerusalem at night, saying, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Unlikely limited Israelites were bitten by snakes. The whole world have been bitten by, the, by sin, and the wages of sin is death. God sent Jesus not only for Israel, but for the whole world. A bronze and snake provide a physical healing in the lifting up the Son of a Man, spiritual healing. Spiritual healing comes when we look at the Son of a Man lifted up. Those who look to Jesus in faith have an eternal life. When I was ordained back in 1994, one of the theological questions was, what is eternal life? Eternal life is more than endless existence. It is a sharing in the life of the eternal one, the very life of God himself. It is the life of the age to come, which is gained by faith. Cannot be destroyed, but is a present possession of the one who believes. Let me say one more time. It is a present possession of the one who believes. Also, Jesus defines eternal life as knowing the one true God, Jesus Christ, whom he sent in John 17, 3. Because of the nature of God, those who have eternal life have a peace with God, peace with one another, and peace with himself or herself. Question is here. Do you have a peace with yourself? If we do not have, we cannot share and we cannot give. If we have not experienced, we cannot talk about. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Peace begins with me. The Israelites focus on the brass serpent and they found healing and had peace 
with themselves, peace with God, and peace with one another. It is the time for the church to get back to the main thing. No more pettiness. If we do not give up pettiness, we become like the fish who lives in underground caverns whose eyes had gradually disappeared, living empty socket. Those who focus on unimportant matters have lost their ability to perceive the difference between pettiness and the main thing, Jesus Christ. But those who give up pettiness, they are the ones who have peace in their hearts. Look at Jesus and live eternal life. Let the peace of Christ dominate in yourself, in our church. That is, comes from we are looking at, we are looking at Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. What are we looking for eternal life? If what we are looking for to looking to does not give us eternal life and we know it. Let us turn our eyes upon Jesus, eternal life and eternal light. Let us turn our eyes upon him and all other things will become strangely dim. Eternal life, eternal light. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word. Grant that your Holy Spirit may continue to guide us in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today we are going to celebrate Holy Communion. Uh, if you can, uh, please turn on page 12 of the United Methodist Hymn Book. I just let you know that before I touch anything here, I want to sanitize myself. Christ our Lord invites you all who loves him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and to seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, saying, Merciful God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we are yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, all of you 
Your sins are forgiven. Page 13, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and the resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to his heavenly father and he broke it. And he gave this disciple and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to his heavenly father, and he gave to his disciples and said, Drink this. From all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with the praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit here on these people and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his, his heavenly banquet. By your, your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor, and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, Because of the uh, COVID, uh, we have a very restricted way of celebrating the Holy Communion. Uh, our lay leader, we, uh, Jody, will help us as she comes. Uh, this is how we are going to do. Each of you will receive individual, this is yours. Each of you will receive a little uh, container which has the, uh, the blood of Christ. So you will uh, take that. Before you take that, come this way. And I will hold this plate 
for you that has already pre-cut uh, bread. It's in the plastic bag. So we will give to you, and uh, as we're saying, this is the body of Christ, this is the blood of Christ. And then you can take, you can take a bag to your pew, and you can sell, you can uh, take a uh, bread and uh, wine, and after you uh, take it, you can put that plastic bag into uh, the container into this little bag, and leave it, uh, as you're going out at the end of a worship, there are pr uh, two stations there, you can leave there so that we can dispose uh, this, our uh, bread. So what I'm going to do, in order to keep the social distance, uh, distance, I'm going to say, uh, keep the distance. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And then I stop speaking and I stretch out. And you take your, and I come back. Pastor Kong needs a good exercise. So table has been prepared for you. All God's children, you are invited to come. Let's celebrate the heavenly banquet. The body of Christ broken for you, Sylvia, <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> you come this side and go that round. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you, Emily. The body of Christ broken for you, Jim. Ellen, the body of Christ, broken for you. Sandy, the body of Christ, broken for you. Miss Joyce, the body of Christ, broken for you. The body of Christ, broken for you. Linda, the body of Christ, broken for you. Joe, the body of Christ is broken for you. Bob, the body of Christ is broken for you. John, the body of Christ is broken for you. Millie, the body of Christ is broken for you. Christ, a broken for you, Brother Larry. Lillian, the body of a Christ, a broken for you. Joyce, the body of a Christ, a broken for you. body of Christ broken for you. Miss Ali, the body of Christ broken for you. Leave it there. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And you're going to give to me? Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Help us to give and commit ourselves to you and to your glory. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. When we love someone, we have a tendency to give. When you love someone, we give. We give our resources, we give our time, our energy, even give all our attention. Christ loves us so much, and he gave himself up for us. He gave himself. And the scripture says, if you need more, and I will give you more. God has given God's word, and God has given his son through the Holy Communion. Now it is our turn to we express our love to our God. So let us offer ourselves and our offerings to God. Let's pray. Great and generous God, our lives are surrounded by things that steal our lives, inflict and destroy us. The tithe and the offering we share with you this day are a way of keeping us focused not on the things that would take life away, but will renew our lives, hope, love, peace, and empathy. As the Israelites look to a serpent on a pole for healing, we look to a savior on a cross to be brought back to life. In that holy name, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. As we continue to worship our living, loving, and life-giving God, we have some celebrations and our prayer concerns with one another, especially people, those who join the worship service. I am very glad to see you today. Glad to see you. And my prayers are with you always. Uh, continue to remember uh, Sister Jean Ann. She has a good speedy recovery. And also Kathy Paul. And she has a, another doctor's appointment this week. And remember Sarah Beth and uh, Mark Bennett and uh, Kathy Hathcock, Carol Holly. And also Trevor Morse is on Bill and Sarah Price. Are there any prayer concerns or celebration that you want to share with the body of Christ? Donna Martin will have knee surgery this Tuesday, and Joe, her husband, will have back surgery on Thursday. Joe? Joe Martin. Anyone else? Anthony Elkins. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Lillian. My sister Elma. Okay. Your brother? What's his name? Spell. Spell. Archon? Mm. Okay. Thank you. We lift him up in our prayers. All the way, Millie back. Um, my, my daughter's mother in law, Susan Harris, is in the hospital. What's her name? Susan Harris. Susan.
Thank you. Let us pray. In this season of repentance, O Lord, we seek your presence. Though we are undeserving of your love, yet we praise you, thank you for that love so marvelously revealed on the cross. So often, O Lord, we have fallen short of your will for our lives. And still you love us. So many times, Lord, we have turned away from your truth and chased foolish notions. And still you keep us in your care. What awesome love you offer to so unworthy a people. Come to us, we pray and transform our lives into useful instrument of your divine purpose. May the power of the resurrection anoint our hearts and empower our service, that we may be your true and faithful servants. We pray all these in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is found on hymn number 365. Please stand and join hymn number 365.
my beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, go in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Let the peace of Christ dwell in you today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. The people of God say, Amen. Amen.